wouldn't it be amazing if there was a way that I could do work, play games, and watch Tech Box all in peace? I sure am tired of having some corporate overlord judging me because of I watch this random tech channel. Well, you can do it with Linux. Wait, what? Linux? Yes, with Linux. Now, I understand that if you've ever have heard of Linux, you probably know it to be challenging and complicated. Something only for the brave that are willing to walk through the mud. But no, you can throw all that in the trash because Linux is for everyone and I can confidently say that Linux gaming is the future of gaming. You can't say that. Are you dumb? What are you talking about? Be real. Jeez, man. Linux? More like corrupted file system. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, fine. I understand. Yes, that's a very bold claim. But with what I'm about to show you, I can confidently say that Linux gaming might almost be easier than Windows gaming with a few caveats. But without further ado, it's about time we take a look. The first thing I want to do is address the installation. Because for any of those brave souls out there, you know that the Windows install wizard is one steaming pile of garbage. Seriously, it's almost as if Microsoft doesn't want you to use Windows. I mean, just look at this. For those of you that already had Windows pre-installed on your machine when you bought it, you were lucky that you were able to skip that installer. It's nothing for beginners. Linux, on the other hand, has many user-friendly distros, which all include a super easy install wizard. For the purpose of today's video, I'm going to be demonstrating System76's Pop! OS, mostly because of how much integrations for gaming are pre-installed. However, Linux Mint also receives an honorable mention for its ease of use and user-friendliness. Both are based on Ubuntu, which is a hugely popular Linux distro. To start, you will need to download your Linux distro from its website. In this case, either Pop! OS or Linux Mint. In the case of Pop! OS, NVIDIA users get to use a version with graphics drivers pre-installed. However, if you own an AMD or Intel GPU, you will need to choose the normal version. With Linux Mint, all you need to do is click download and you'll be brought to a list of different Linux Mint versions. For gaming, you'll want to choose Cinnamon Edition as it is the most popular and has the cleanest UI. Scroll down and select a mirror of your choice. Make sure to select a mirror from your region for the smoothest installation experience. I won't go deeply how to flash an image to a USB drive, however I do recommend using a tool called Bolina Etcher. It will walk you through how to flash a USB drive. You can find their website in the description. Then plug your USB drive into your computer and push the F12 key several times until you see a boot menu similar to this one. Select your boot device and then select install or try Ubuntu. After a few minutes, you should be greeted by one of these lovely screens. At this point, you are welcome to either continue with the installation or explore your OS of choice by clicking Try Pop OS or Try Linux Mint. This can be a good way to explore and decide if you still want to install your Linux distro. After you have decided on your distro and you would like to continue with the installation, keep going through the install setup. If you already have Windows or Mac OS installed and you'd like to keep all your files and information, select Custom Install and partition the drive around until you're happy with the sizes. There are plenty of great tutorials online for this, however, you are best off by using a brand new hard drive or SSD, better yet, with plenty of storage on it since most modern light titles require 20 plus gigabytes to be installed. Then, continue the installation as you normally would. The amazing thing about Ubuntu based distros is that, like these two, is that they only have one privacy setting that enables or disables all analytics data. That's it! Suck on that, Windows. <laughs> now, all that may seem complicated, but here you are, up and running with Linux. It's quite an amazing project, especially considering that you can have this much usability on something that was completely free. And unlike pirating Windows, it's not illegal. Starting to feel why this is the future of gaming? Well, this is just the beginning. Obviously, we don't have any games right now, so let's fix that. Need Steam? Wait, stop. Linux is a little different than Windows. In a good way. Much like Mac OS, you have an App Store or Package Manager. In Pop! OS, the Package Manager is called the Pop Shop, and in Linux Mint, it is called Software Manager. You can always search for the application in the Package Manager before going to the author's website. If you can't find it, go to the creator's website and look for something called a repository or a PPA, which is also known as a personal package archive. A PPA is a form of repository that has extra packages that don't come bundled with your system in it. However, all you have to do is go to your package manager, open the system sources menu, go to extra sources and click add new source. This will allow you to copy and paste the repository or PPA link from the author's website. However, if there is no PPA or repository, as a last resort, you can follow the instructions 
on the website. But we need to install Steam, so let's get back to that. Simply open your package manager and search for Steam. Then simply hit install and you're good. Great, so now that we have Steam, go play some Windows games, right? No, not quite there. One more step. While there is an extensive collection of games in Steam that work on Linux, some won't. I mean, obviously you can use popular titles like CSGO and stuff like that, but many titles like Cyberpunk and other such games require actual Windows. So, just go to the Steam settings, head to Steam Play, and make sure both boxes are checkmarked. This way you can now run most Windows games on Linux. How cool is that? It uses something called the Proton Compatibility Layer, which is based off of Wine, an open source project to emulate Windows games on Linux. The great thing about Proton is that you can run majority of Windows games that are only Windows, like such as Among Us. Yes, I was the one who bought that. I know, I was one of those guys. On Linux, it's really awesome. If you aren't sure about how well your Windows game will run, just head over to ProtonDB and search for your game and you can find a rating. And also, you can find troubleshooting help if you're having any issues. Now, you're welcome to sit back and play some games. That's amazing, isn't it? So that quick, and now you can already play games. Wow. Well, this must be really easy, shouldn't it? <laughs> well, I'm just kidding. Obviously, that was a bit to do, but... At the same time, we're almost getting there because there's a few more things we might want to do for other Windows games that aren't on Steam. Come on, I know all of you like a good game of Rocket League. And as a matter of fact, so do I. So to do that, we're going to need to install something called Lutris. Lutris is a gaming platform that also happens to make installing Windows games look easier than on Windows. Yes, it makes it easier to install Windows games than it is to install them on Windows themselves. But first, we're going to need to install Wine. As I already talked about this, Wine is a Windows compatibility layer that translates Windows API into something that Linux can make use of, called POSIX. All we have to do is click download and select Ubuntu. Although I just talked about avoiding this, installing Wine requires the use of the terminal. Don't worry, it will all be fine. You will want to copy these commands on the screen and then run them in the terminal individually. Make sure that for this command here, you select the right repository based on your distro. For today, we are using Ubuntu 2204 Jammy Jellyfish, so copy this one. Then copy this command, and lastly, copy this one. We want to use the stable branch to avoid any issues with game crashes and such. Now that we've downloaded Wine, good job by the way, we're almost there. We need to install one more thing before we can install Lutris. See these two commands on the screen? The top one is for NVIDIA users, so paste that command into your terminal and run it. And the bottom one is for AMD and Intel users. This will install more graphics drivers, and after that is finished, you can restart your computer. Now we can finally install Lutris. Go to your package manager, search for Lutris, and then hit install. Open Lutris and hit the plus button in the top right. Select the search the Lutris website option, and then type your game into the search bar. Then select your game and select how you'd like to install it. And that's it, Lutris will do the rest for you. I mean, look at this. Like I'm totally just playing Rocket League right now on Linux. On Linux, yeah, that's right. Although to be fair, playing on Linux definitely doesn't make you a better player, as usual. What? I actually scored that? Okay, that's crazy. How about some vintage StarCraft? Anyone want to play with me? <laughs> I got your message, right. Now, certain players, if not all players, will prefer a controller on Rocket League, and that's fine. Literally. Linux has support for a majority of controllers over USB, and some even over Bluetooth, Wiimotes included. If you're into emulation and retro gaming, Linux is super easy to set up. For GameCube and Wii games, you can find the Dolphin emulator in the package manager. For other games, you want to use a games platform called RetroArch, which is also in the package manager. RetroArch has support for most retro consoles, so you'll have no difficulty getting that set up. Anyone want to join me for some Mario Kart Wii? Oh, of course, playing on Linux doesn't make you a better player. How about some Super Mario World?
Oh, that was actually a really easy level to beat. I forgot about that. <laughs> I haven't played this game in like three years, just to be clear. For further customization, you can install Green with Envy and NVIDIA Fan Control app, which allows you to create custom fan curves. And you can also run it on startup by opening startup applications, adding a new application, and typing this command under the command field. You can also install OpenRGB for some RGB control, which, yes, is now possible on Linux. Although it only works with newer hardware, so, like... If your devices aren't supported on OpenRGB, you can open an issue for a new device on their GitLab page. Links to everything I have talked about will be in the description. Obviously, if you're planning on recording or streaming, you can also install OBS. Get subscribed because I'm going to talk more about streaming and content creation on Linux in the future, so you don't want to miss that. And that's everything. If you guys have any questions, you can leave a comment. I'll try to answer everything as best as I can. I'm planning on doing more Linux videos in the future, so let me know what kind of Linux video you want to see. If you decide to install Linux on your system, that's great. Glad you did. You can tell me that in the comments too. And if you're still thinking about it, don't worry about it. Linux will be only getting better within the next coming years, and it truly is for everyone. To see my review of the Sennheiser HD 450 BT headphones, that video is here. And if you're wondering why your laptop is so much slower than your PC, that video is here. My name is Karsten, this is TechBox, and I'll catch you all in the next one.